Typically, the people who follow me tend to be more optimistic versus pessimistic. 78% of the people who follow me think that the world is Yeah, I was super surprised by that. Today, we're going to be talking about, is the world getting worse? Something to think about. There's a lot of shit that's happening in the world right now. And uh, I had put up yesterday a uh, Instagram and Facebook stories poll. And I put up a couple different things. And one of them said, do you think aliens exist? Yes or no. Uh, is money the root of all evil? Yes or no. And then one of them said, do you think the world is getting better or worse? And I was super surprised to find that 78% of the people who follow me think that the world is getting worse. Yeah, I was super surprised by that. And the reason why is because I think that the, typically the people who follow me tend to be more optimistic versus pessimistic. And so I wanted to dive into the issue to talk about my viewpoints of if I think the world is getting better or worse, because I was super surprised. And what I think is I think the world is getting better, but I think the world is going through an awakening. So let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Let's say that somebody is 50 years old, right? And they don't take care of their body. They eat whatever it is they want to eat. They eat greasy food. They eat really sugary food, lots of caffeine, just bunch of crap into their body. They don't care about anything that, you know, they just literally eat whatever it is that they want to eat. Nothing healthy. Okay. Let's also say that they don't ever work out. Never. They've worked out in years and years and years. And let's say they're overweight, 30, 40, 50, 70, a hundred pounds overweight. I don't know what it is, but let's say they're overweight because of the fact they haven't been taking care of themselves. And they also don't get much sleep. They don't get good sleep. And then one day that person has a heart attack and the heart attack luckily doesn't kill them but it does give them a heart attack. They do have a heart attack. Heart attack isn't fun, I'm sure. Never had one before, but I'm sure it probably isn't the most fun thing in the world. So you look at this and you say, after years and years and years of abuse and neglect and not treating their body right, their body has a heart attack. And because of that heart attack, the person wakes up and they go, oh my God, like I almost just died. I'm now becoming aware of how I haven't been taking care of my body. I haven't been treating it right. I haven't been giving it the right fuel. I have been just eating stuff for taste and not for actual health reasons. I haven't worked out in God knows long how it's been since I've worked out. I don't get any sleep. I don't get good sleep. I drink a lot of alcohol. And all of that over years and years and years and years has accumulated to this one moment of me having a heart attack. Now, I have a choice. Either I can go back to life as it was, or I can make some different choices based on my heart attack. And let's say that person decides, you know what? I want to live long enough to see my daughter walk down the aisle. I want to live long enough to be able to be a grandfather that ends up being able to play with his, his grandkids and go to their sports games and be able to continue to travel. And I want to live longer than just past the age of 60 years old. I want to live to 85, 90, what would it look like for me to live to 90 and see my grandkids get married as well? And they start to take care of themselves. They start eating healthy. Maybe they hire a nutritionist. They hire the nutritionist and take care of their body. They hire someone that, that teaches them how to work out and the right ways to move. They start figuring out ways to improve their sleep and they read books around improving their sleep. And because of this, this heart attack, their entire life shifts because they now woke up to how they have been treating their body. Why do I bring this up? Well, why don't you just think about what we've been going through? And actually, before we, we dive into what we've been going through, if somebody were to have a heart attack and then switch their entire lives around and change for the better and lived longer and was able to see their, their daughter walk down the aisle and be able to hang out with their grandkids and have a better life and be healthier and happier and better sleep and all of that stuff, is the heart attack still bad? Or was the heart attack the thing, the good thing that came in to awaken this person from the sleep that they were in and the, the neglect that they were giving their body? And now, ah, that's amazing because you know what? Now I can treat my body the right way. And that heart attack woke them up is what you can say. It is their awakening from everything that they were going through. Now, is a heart attack bad? Or was maybe the heart attack a blessing? Was the heart attack something that actually ended up being good because in the long term, it changed them. And I think basically what we're in right now is the middle of a heart attack. 
right? I'm assuming that when you go through a heart attack, it's not very fun. No one's like, holy shit, this is great. I'm having a heart attack. It's usually people are probably freaking out. It probably hurts a lot. It's probably something that you don't want to go through. But if you think about what we're going through and the heart attack that we're going through, the amazing thing about it is that we're now starting to wake up to everything that is wrong in the world that we need to fix. And this isn't me saying this, I take this side of this. I don't take any side in politics or any of that stuff. In my opinion, doesn't matter because everyone has an opinion. So it's just me talking from just a, this is the way that I view the world. We're now waking up to old, oppressive and evil systems that are being brought to the surface. And a lot of people who were not aware of them are now aware that there's a lot of things happening that maybe they weren't aware of. Maybe different racial things, maybe different gender things. It's becoming apparent that some people have been held down by society. It's been apparent that maybe some people don't get 100% equal opportunities, like group A might not get the same opportunity as group B based off of where they lived or where they grew up in the, the, the school that they were able to go to in the education system that they had. It's becoming aware how our government is not set up for the people's best interest, but maybe their own. And people are starting to become very aware of these things, like a heart attack that wakes you up and goes, holy shit, something's not right. But in turn, now we're in the middle of a time where things can start to shift, things can start to change. So is having a heart attack fun? Probably not. I don't think anybody's ever, I've never heard of somebody using the, the adjective as fun for a heart attack. But does it seem like sometimes if you're in the middle of a heart attack, it's hitting the fan? Probably. But if you live through the heart attack, you make changes. You change your life, you change your lifestyle. Did it turn out to be a good thing? My rebuttal would be yes. I do think, my argument would be yes. I think that it is something that helped. A heart attack is an awakening for bad health in most cases. Obviously there's circumstances outside that where someone just has heart problems, but in most cases, a heart attack is an awakening to bad health, right? Civil unrest is an awakening to how we should look at the systems that we have and see if we can make them better for all people. So the same way that a heart attack wakes up somebody who hasn't been taking care of their health, civil unrest wakes up the public to how we should be treating people and start to change our systems and processes. Make sense? So another thing <clears throat> that we should consider when we're talking about the, uh, the, the, the way that the world looks really bad right now is that you have to realize we're seeing a lot more footage, a lot more videos, a lot more pictures than we ever have of things that are bad that are happening in the world. Are there things that are bad are happening in the world? Absolutely. Are there more than there ever have been? Absolutely not. And I'm going to share some statistics with you around that in just a little while to tell you that. But I think what you also re have to realize is that if you were to rewind 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 99% of people did not have a phone or, I, I mean, actually not even take phone. They didn't even have a camera to take pictures. If you would have talked to somebody 20 years ago and be like, yeah, I take pictures with my phone. They'd be like, yeah, you're fucking crazy. Cause that would make no sense to somebody 20 years ago, right? A phone was made to make phone calls. But if you just think about that, now every single person has a camera in their pocket at all times. They can take pictures of anything. So things that were kind of under the surface in hidden a long time ago are now coming to the surface and they have to come to the surface just like a heart attack so that you can be able to work through them. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing that I want you to consider is that now there's a lot more cameras than there ever have been. So if you're seeing more things and thinking that the world is worse because of that, you just have to realize there's just a lot more cameras than there ever have been. And once again, I'm gonna go over the statistics in just a minute. I think they're going to kind of surprise you. Another thing that has shifted a lot in the past 20, 30 years is that the news used to be something that you could trust. The news had no, the news had no hidden agenda. Now we all know that they have their own agendas that they want to push to you. And so they're pushing them. Another thing that you can actually start to think about is the rise of social media. In my opinion, social media is not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It is just a thing. And the human condition is now coming out through social media. But the interesting thing about social media is that social media makes it easier to share information faster and more widespread than any time in humankind. So if it was 30 years ago and you saw something with your own eyes that was bad that happened in front of you, the only people you could really tell is you could, I guess you could call the cops. 
you could tell your neighbors, you could tell your family. But right now, if something were to happen bad in front of your eyes and you were to videotape it and put it up on Facebook and put it up on Instagram, it could immediately go viral. Millions or hundreds of millions of people could see it. News groups could take, pick it up and then it would be all over the place. So it's not that things are getting worse. It's just that the darkness is coming to light because we are able to share this information quicker than ever before. And to dive into the statistics, which I want to share with you guys, it, it's super interesting, is this. So there's a... Um, I did my own research on this and there's also a Harvard psychologist. He's a, a cognitive psychologist named Steven Pinker. He's actually got a couple books about, and a TED talk about how the world is getting safer and it's better than it ever has been. It just seems like it's not based off of the fact that we have a lot of information that we can share, pictures, videos, immediately. If you go to the Department of Justice's website, on the Department of Justice's website, if you look at statistics, firearm homicides are down 39% from 1993. So if you look at it, you think, oh my gosh, there's so many more people dying from guns. There's actually 39% less people than there were in 1993, you know, and it continues to go down year over year. I'm not here to argue firearms, so don't even think that that's what I'm trying to get across. I'm just trying to give you plain and simple statistics to show you that the world is actually getting better, right? To make you feel better about, ah, maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. Maybe it is actually starting to get better. Uh, Non-fatal firearm accidents are down 69%. So non-fatal firearm accidents are down 69%. The numbers of people who are murdered on a yearly basis in the United States is down. And now you might say, okay, well, what about outside of the United States? I understand there's, there's places where things have gotten worse and they've gotten better and things have gotten worse and things have gotten better. But if you look at the world collectively as a whole, and I understand there's gonna be some anomalies to this, everybody. But if you look at the world collectively as a whole, the number of people killed in war is one twelfth of what it was in the 1950s and the 1960s. So you literally have to look at that and go, wow, one twelfth of what it was before 60, 70 years ago. So now, right now, is the safest time to be alive as a human. Is it perfect? Hell no, absolutely not. But what I think we're going through is a little bit of a heart attack. We're starting to realize some of the ways that we weren't taking care of our quote unquote body, other people's bodies, our system, our, you know, the body that we are all a part of, the governments that we're a part of, the local areas we're a part of, the nations we're a part of, and the world that we're a part of, we're starting to become very aware of old, evil, oppressive systems, and they're very blatantly in front of us now, and we're now able to start to work through those things. So is it the most comfortable time to be alive? Absolutely not. Will it get better? Will there be something good that comes out of all of this? I tend to be an optimistic person, so I think yes. And I would like to argue that with anybody. I think that it is getting better. Statistically, it's showing it's getting better. There's books that are written on it getting better. Is everything perfect? Absolutely not. There is no way you will ever hear me say that everything is perfect. And I don't think humans are perfect. Therefore, I don't think everything ever will be perfect. But I tend to lean towards the side of everything is working for me, not against me. The world is working for me, not to me. And if that's the case, I also feel the world is working for you and not to you. It's never working against you. It's always working towards your side. So is it perfect? Absolutely not. But what I would recommend is this. If you're starting to feel the feelings of, of the world being heavy, of the news being heavy, of stuff that's happening in society being heavy, Turn off the news. The news is not there to support you. It's not there to inform you. I promise you that. I've done episodes before about how the news is literally just there to make you not informed, but conformed. And they put out a bunch of negativity because your brain is addicted to negativity because that's how the human species survived. So turn off the news if you're starting to feel like the world is heavy. Turn off social media if you're starting to feel like things are heavy as well. Go out and experience the world. Walk outside. Look at the sun and you'll realize, man, things aren't as bad as they seem to be when you watch them on the news. On the, on the screens, everything seems to be collapsing. When you walk outside of your house, it tends to be a lot better. And I'm a very optimistic person, so I think we're going in the right direction. I think we have a lot of work to do. I think there's a lot of things that still need to work, be, be worked through. But you have to realize that everything that comes into your brain influences the way that you feel. Everything that you see, influences the way that you feel. Everything that you hear influences the way that you feel. Every person that you talk to influences the way that you feel. Everything that you read on social media, 
or see on TV is going to influence the way that you feel. And in turn, that kind of brainwashes you to be a certain way. So if you're thinking of it this way, if, if every single thing that comes into our brain, in a way, brainwashes us to feel a certain way, why don't we take control of our, our, our own brainwashing? Why don't I go, you know what? I'm not gonna look at the news today. I'm not gonna turn on social media today. I'm gonna read a book. I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos from some motivational speakers or from some psychologist or neurologist or whatever it is you're trying to learn from and be in control of your own brainwashing. Because I promise you this, if you're not in control of it yourself, you're still being brainwashed. Is it the brainwashing that you want? I would prefer to wake up and say, I'm in control of my own brainwashing. I'm gonna put on the music I like, I'm gonna listen to the podcasts I like, I'm gonna read the books that I like, I'm not gonna turn on the news, I'm not gonna turn on social media, and I'm gonna hang out with the people that I like. Because ultimately, that's the way that we get better. So, is the world getting worse? I don't think that it is. I just think that we're in the middle of a heart attack. And I feel like on the other side of this heart attack, the world will be better. People are gonna work it out. We're gonna figure it out. And the evil, old, and oppressive systems will be worked through and released and we'll be on our way towards a better society and hopefully better human connection. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you continue to eat what the media and news feed you and all that negativity, you're going to have to deal with the sickness that comes from it.